SharePoint document libraries are an absolute must if you've got a business and you want to collaborate and share information. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create your own SharePoint document library, how to assign permissions, how to migrate your old files and folders over to your new SharePoint library and much, much more. But before we start, just a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards. I'm a business IT consultant from Yorkshire in the UK. I've got an IT company called Integral IT and we help our clients with the IT support and the cyber security. So before we begin, let's have a quick chat about what SharePoint actually is. Well, SharePoint is one of the tools that is provided with lots of Microsoft 365 packages. If you've got Microsoft 365, you're probably paying for SharePoint. So what is it? Well, it's a huge collaborative tool. You can create websites in there and it's a place to secure and store your documents. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on storing your documents in a SharePoint document library. Why would you want to store all your files and folders in a SharePoint document library rather than store them on a server in your office or a NAS drive or an external hard drive? Well, if you store them in a SharePoint document library, you don't have to worry about hardware failing. So what happens if you've got all your files and folders on a server and the server goes kaput? You've got to buy a new server. And also when that server gets old, you've got to replace it. So why not just store all your files and folders in the Microsoft Cloud using SharePoint? And why would you store your files and folders in SharePoint rather than another cloud solution, something like Dropbox or Google Drive? Well, SharePoint integrates, as you'd expect, really well with Microsoft Office. That's things like Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and Outlook. So if it integrates really well and you're using those products, SharePoint is the best way to go. So without further ado, let's get stuck in and create a SharePoint document library. First of all, you want to log into Microsoft 365. Once you're logged in, if you just click on this button here, and you can see that SharePoint is here. So we click on there. You can see I've got so much SharePoint sites already that I've used for testing. Creating a document library is really simple. You just go to the top left hand corner and click on create site. You've then got an option. You can have a team site or a communication site. A communication site is for sites that are kind of one way communication. So it's like portals and things like that. When it comes to document libraries, it's always going to be a team site. It wants a name for the team site. So I'm going to call this YouTube. And once I do that, we can give it a site description if we want. And then we've got some privacy settings. So it can be private where we can invite members to it, or it can be public where anybody with the link can see it. I'm going to keep that as it is. and I'm going to click on next. Now at this point, we can start adding different members into our site. It's creating at the moment. I'm not going to add anyone else, but you would then go down the list of people who you want to add to the site and you just add them here. Once that's finished, we'll click there. And there we have created our YouTube SharePoint site. Now we've got documents here. So we'll just click on maybe later. Now let's have a quick look round. So we can obviously click on new here and we can create folders. So we can call this folder one. We can create different folders. We can also create Word documents, Excel documents, and PowerPoint documents. So we've got the full Office suite over the web browser. This is comparative to Google, if you've used that before. That is predominantly done over a web browser. Well, this is Microsoft's answer to this. So we can open Word documents, we can open Excel documents, and we can open PowerPoint documents as well all over the web browser. So you wouldn't necessarily have to have Microsoft Office installed to use this. You can use it over the web browser. So the next thing I want to show you is just the permissions. You notice when I set the site up, we could add members into there. I chose not to, but if I want to do that anytime, I can just click on here where it says one member and I can add members. Now, when I add a member, I can give them different permissions. We can have a site owner, which I am because I've created the site and I've got full permissions over the site. So I can actually delete the entire site if I want to. There are, there's also the site members permission and they've got various dumbed down permissions over the site so they can edit, they can view site content, but they wouldn't be able to delete the site. So anytime you can give people permissions over the site. 
Now I showed you the folders here and the various office applications here over the web browser. I know that lots of people still like to work on the computer using File Explorer. I'm actually one of those. Now, If I look at my File Explorer now, you can see I've got a Jonathan Edwards and I've got a couple of SharePoint sites here that correspond to, just go back here and click on SharePoint. You can see that I've got a sales team and an account SharePoint site and they correspond with these here simply because I have synced these down to my local computer and you can do that as well so all you've got to do is open your new SharePoint site we can click on that and we can click on documents and simply we click on the sync button here now once we sync that that will sync down to the local computer so if I now go to file explorer again you can see that my YouTube thing is here so I've got my folder and I've got those documents that are created. So I can work in the web browser or I can work on my computer. Now at the start of this video, I spoke about moving all your files and folders into SharePoint. If you've got a business and you've got an on-site server or if you store a lot of your information on your computer hard drive, it's better to move that into SharePoint. If you've got lots of files and folders and some of our customers do, they've got gigabytes and gigabytes of storage. How do you get that from your server into SharePoint? Well, Microsoft have created a tool for this and it's called the SharePoint Migration Tool. So I'll show you how this works here. So you simply go to the web page to start with and you download the SharePoint Migration Tool. I've actually done that already and it's here. So if I click on there, it'll launch the SharePoint Migration Tool. So if I just enter my username and password, and once I do that, we get to this bit here where I can start a new migration. Now, just as a test, on my C drive of this computer, what I've done is create a folder called server data. Now, if I go in there, I've just created a few files. Now, obviously, if you've got a server in your office, you're going to have lots more files than this. But this is just an example. So that's the folder that I want to migrate into my new YouTube SharePoint site. So I'll minimize that and I'll click on start a new migration. Now I'm copying content from a file share. That is a, a file share on my local computer. And I'm just going to browse that file share now. So it's C drive and it's server data. Okay. So that is the folder that I'm migrating. Next thing I want to click on next. And I'm migrating this to SharePoint. Now it's going to ask for the SharePoint site in question. So it's actually created this SharePoint link here. This doesn't exist. So if I go ahead with this, it will create a new site. But if you remember, I want to migrate the data to the site that I've just created. So if I just go back to my site now, which is YouTube, there it is. I'm just going to click on up to here. So that is the name of the site. We'll copy that and I'll paste this into here. I click on next. Now it's asking me where I want to move it to. Well, obviously I want to move it to the documents and I will click on next. I will click on next. Now I've got a few more options here that I'm not going to go into on this video, uh, but there's just a few settings that you can choose to fine tune your migration. After that, I would just simply click on migrate and that would run through the migration. So as you can see, that has now finished. We've migrated three files out of three. It's just an example. So I'll minimize that. Now I'm going to go back to my SharePoint site. You can see that that server data folder is there and my files have been migrated. So that is how you easily migrate all your historic files and folders into SharePoint. Now one of the great advantages of using SharePoint over an on-site server or storing information on your computer hard drive is the backup functionality. Microsoft include a couple of features that mean you can really look after your data. The first one's called version history. Let me show you that. So we're going to server data. I've just got a Word document that I've thrown together here for test purposes. Now, if we go up to the top here, you can see that there's a version history. Now, Microsoft include all the different amendments that have been made to this document. So I can go on here. This is the original document. You can see at the top, I can save a copy 
or I can restore it. So if I've made some changes and I'm not happy, I can just go into the version history and I can restore the previous one. That's a really good idea. So the other one is called the recycle bin. So if I delete my monthly budget, so click on delete there, that has now gone. So unfortunately that's gone from the web portal. And again, if I look at my local sync, in server data, it's also gone from this folder as well. So how do I get that back? Well, simply Microsoft have a recycle bin. So if I go in here, you should see the monthly budget. I can right click on there, I can delete forever, or I can restore it, and that will restore. Now, a word of warning, data only stays in this folder for a limited period of time. I think it's about 90 days. And after that, it deletes forever. Once it's restored, I can go back in here, I can click in server data, and you can see that my monthly budget is back. And I can go in here, and you can see that it's back here as well. So that's been restored. So I hope that video has been really useful. Creating a SharePoint document library is a really good idea if you've got lots of information that you want to share and collaborate on. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I look forward to seeing you again soon.